Hi, this is Bill Swarns, and we are going to do a lecture burst on chapter 25, caring for a client with coronary and peripheral blood vessel, vessel disease or disorders. <laughs> Arteriosclerosis uh, is the loss of elasticity or hardening of the arteries that accompanies the aging process. Uh, the cause is mainly uh, a buildup of calcium deposits in the cytoplasm. The calcium causes the arteries to lose their elasticity. When the left ventricle contracts, uh, the rigid art arteries uh, fail to uh, accommodate the added pressure and they don't stretch. The result is that they reduce the volume of oxygenated blood that is delivered to uh, organs such as the myocardium, which is the heart, the brain, the kidneys, and uh, other extremities. Uh, there's atherosclerosis, which is a little bit different cause. It is a condition in which the lumen of the artery uh, fills with fatty deposits called plaque. Uh, plaque is chiefly um, a compo is composed of cholesterol, which is a fatty acid, a fatty lipid substance. Um, atherosclerosis is more uh, modifiable uh, for its contributing factors than arteriosclerosis uh, to the vascular disease. Uh, contributing risk factors is the mechanism of the fat formation and metabolism, obesity, and inflammation response, inflammatory response. Risk factors for atherosclerosis is hyperlipidemia, too much fat in the system and not getting rid of it. Uh, a lot of times you can take a lot of fat in, but if you're, as long as you exercise, you get rid of that fat. Uh, high levels of blood fat. Factors such as gender, heredity, diet, disease, uh, such as metabolic syndrome, otherwise known as diabetes, and inactivity. Um, infections, um, chlamydia, pneumonia, uh, a bacteria, that uh, commonly causes respiratory infections. Uh, atheroma, which is a fatty mass in the internal uh, ar artery walls. Um, inflammation, a, relation, a relationship between body fat and thrombic uh, proteins, uh, multiple factors, cigarette smoking, stressful lifestyle, obesity, diabetes, mellitus, and hypertension, all are contributing factors to atherosclerosis, okay? So occlusive disorders in coron uh, of coronary blood vessels. Uh, coronary occlusion, uh, closing of the coronary artery, which uh, reduces the total uh, or totally interrupts blood flow to the distal muscle area. Coronary arteries uh, disease uh, precedes coronary occlusion left untreated leads to myocardial infarction, MIs, um, one of the largest causes of death in the United States. Symptoms usually do not occur unless the, at least 60% of the arterial lumen is occluded. So it's got quite a bit of time in there that you can reverse the cause of the coronary artery occlusive disorders. Um, the pathophysiology and etiology is arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis, sclerotic changes uh, in the coronary arteries supplying the myocardium. So basically it's a combination of two things, combination of calcium buildup that lines the walls that doesn't allow for the stretch to uh, the artery to, to uh, accommodate the added pressure and then you have the atherosclerotic changes which are the fatty deposits of plaque that build up on the in inside of the lumen. Uh, inherited factors, males more than females. Uh, diabetic, diabetics have an increase in uh, sugar in their system and therefore it, it slows, sort of thickens the blood. Uh, increased lipid levels, uh, genetic predis predisposition, and then hypertension. Uh, behavior risk factors, smoking, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, Aggressive personality, which I thought was interesting. Um, the aggressive personality actually increases your chance of coronary artery disease and then high fat diets, okay? So um, 
assessment findings, uh, asymptomatic or fatigue. Uh, most people, um, <clears throat> before they ever, ever, ever have chest pain or angina, they have fatigue. They just don't have the energy that they used to have when they were younger. Uh, radiate, the chest pain or angina usually isn't chest pain. I mean, it can be feeling like a pressure in your chest or indigestion, a lot of people say it feels like I'm, you know, I had something bad to eat. Um, but we also have left shoulder, arm, fingers, uh, jaw, neck, and back pain, okay? Uh, atypical symptoms such as nausea, fatigue, and dizziness also occur. <clears throat> Diagnostic findings, lipid profile, um, studies, uh, electron beam computer tomography, which is your CT scan, uh, exercise e echocardiogram, electrocardiograms uh, to see if there's any changes in with uh, exercise, if your EKG changes, cardiac catheterization, that's an invasive procedure. The other two, other, other two the electron beam computer tomography, the CT scan, and the exercise electrocardiogram are non-invasive. The lipid profile, eh, it's draw blood. Uh, the <clears throat> arteriography is a, a little bit of a um, invasive type thing and then stress testing, which is non-invasive. Medical management, <clears throat> weight loss, stress management and blood glucose control. Drug therapy, you take nitrates, beta blockers, uh, calcium channel blockers, and angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, ACE inhibitors, and diuretics. Uh, some studies have shown that supplemental of folate, folic acid, B6, and B12 also can help reduce the amount of plaque in your system, okay? Uh, surgical management, you have the percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty, uh, PTCA, balloon angioplasty, um, which is uh, they take and go up through your groin or through your arm, and they take and uh, thread a wire into your heart arteries, and then you would take and thread over top of that wire, you thread a balloon that is deflated. And then once it gets to the portion of the heart artery that is partially blocked, they expand that balloon and it presses the plaque out of the way and up against the wall. Um, they can also deploy a coronary stent, which is like a wire mesh that um, some of them are treated with uh, radiation and that to prevent the accumulation of uh, plaque in their arteries where the stent is. Uh, there's also an athrectomy, which is the removal of fatty plaque. It's sort of like a rotor rooter job. They go in there, they rotor rooter it, and they suck out the plaque. Uh, coronary artery bypass graft, or CABG. Um, you know, nurses like, medical professions like food. So pizza, you can have a pizza or you can have cabbage. Um, then you have your uh, transmyocardial revascularization, TMR. Um, have seen this gain popularity over the last couple of years because it is a <coughs> procedure that it's not where you don't have a big cut in your chest. The client with chest pain that do not respond to medication and those that are not a candidate or a CABG. Uh, nursing management of these patients. <clears throat> Assess the characteristics of the chest pain and administer and prescribe drugs that dilate the coronary arteries or reduce the work of the heart. So in, encourage rest, administer oxygen to improve the oxygen supply to the heart muscle educate the client to reduce the modifiable um, coronary artery disease risk factors. For example, smoking cessation. Um, smoking is one of the worst things you can do for your heart. 
educate a client to reduce the modifiable risk factors and then uh, prepare a client for the diagnostic test or treatment procedures that they may have. <clears throat> Question one, a 55 year old client has been diagnosed with CAD. The nurse is teaching the client nutritional aspects of a low cholesterol diet. What statement made by the client indicates understanding of the diet? A, broiled chicken with skin removed contains no cholesterol. B, eat fish rather than red meat because it contains no cholesterol. C, it is permissible to use polyunsaturated oils to fry food. And D, egg whites do not contain cholesterol. Everybody got it right? D is the right one. Egg whites do not contain cholesterol. <clears throat> Rationale, egg yolks contain the cholesterol. Egg whites do not contain cholesterol. And any kind of meat contains cholesterol, just some of them are better than others. Fish, chicken with the skin removed, it still has cholesterol in it, but it's lower than red meat. Myocardial infarction occurs when there is a prolonged total occlusion of a coronary artery blood flow. There's types, there's transmural infarction, which is a Q-wave MI, um, an infarct that extends through the full thickness of the myocardial wall. So it goes through the myocardium, the endocardium, and the uh, epicardium. Uh, the uh, subendocardial infarction, a non-Q-wave MI, a partial thickness, and then the cause causes thrombus secondary to arteriosclerotic changes or atherosclerotic changes uh, and arteriospasms. Complications, dysrhythmias. More than 50% of the deaths from MIs occur within 72 hours of, for this reason, they cannot correct the um, dysrhythmia that it happens. Uh, cardiogenic shock, high mortality rate occurs more when 40% of the left ventricle has lost the ability to pump effectively. <clears throat> Ventricular rupture, now I've only seen this one time, uh, dyspnea, rapid right-sided heart failure, and shock results. Uh, then there's the uh, hemopericardium, which is a, uh, you're, you have a pericardium that is around your uh, heart. It's sort of like a tough sack, and you pop a bleed into that area, and it fills with blood and causes a cardiac tamponade and uh, the prognosis is very poor. Unless they can get in there and stop it right away, uh, the person's going to die. Uh, ventricular aneurysm, that's a weakness in the wall of the heart and it will um, cause problems if you don't correct the issue, okay? Complications continued. Uh, there's arterial embolism, a clot can form in the cavity of the ventricular aneurysm and move to the lungs and to the brain, and you can die from that. Uh, venous thrombus, a vein of uh, lower extremities and pelvis that trans, tra uh, break loose and go up into your pulmonary embolism. And on, onset is usually sudden, chest pain, dyspnea, cyanosis, blood tinge sputum, it's, uh, they start coughing up this pink frothy sputum and, <clears throat> and they uh, have a severe sense of impending doom. They basically say, I'm going to die. And then they proceed to try to do so. Uh, pericarditis, inflammation of the pericardium. Uh, and then there's mitral insufficiency and mitral regurgitation, okay? Assessment findings, men typically experience uh, sudden severe chest pain, usually some sternal, and may radiate to shoulders, arms, jaw, teeth, and throat. Women have more vague symptoms, uh, unexplained fatigue, abdominal pain, shortness of breath, back pain. Um, unlike angina pain, rest and sublingual nitrates do not relieve MI pain, may last for four hours. 
for hours or even days. There's just gnawing, aching pain that they have. Uh, diagnostic tests, uh, serum enzymes, uh, CPKs, uh, they, those have sort of fallen out of favor. Uh, troponin levels are more um, in favor right now because those show a quicker uh, enzyme reaction than do the CKIs. CKIs used to be every eight hours for 24 hours. Troponins are every eight hours um, or every four hours times three. So you get a lot more knowledge in 12 hours than you do in uh, 24, okay? Medical management treatment is uh, direct toward uh, reducing tissue hypoxia, relieving pain, treating shock if present, and alleviating dysrhythmias. Uh, thrombolytic therapy, uh, we can take in as long as the person has not had any major surgeries or any strokes or any kind of bleeding problems, we can give them uh, TPA or uh, lipase that will dissolve clots and that, that can help. Or the surgical management, you can have a CABG, uh, cardiomyoplasty, uh, heart wrap. Those are other types of things that could happen. Uh, cardiac rehabilitation medically, a uh, supervised program combines exercise and education activities to speed recovery and reduce the preventing or prevent recurring episodes, okay? And it's usually a long process, usually six months to a year. Six months is minimal. A uh, year to two years is what is normal. A nursing process for acute uh, myocardial infarction assessment. Uh, so part of your nursing process is assessment, you know, pain description, vital signs, cardiac rhythm, heart, lung sounds, peripheral pulses, um, diagnosis, planning, and interventions. You're going to uh, say, okay, he's got acute pain, uh, administer oxygen, nitrates, nitroglycerin, IV morphine, or morphine sulfate. <clears throat> it's what they used to call MONA. It's morphine, oxygen, nitrates, and aspirin, okay? Risk for anxiety or fear related to perception of impending doom. Explain the procedure, promote rest, acknowledge grief, and administer prescribed sed sedatives. Uh, evaluation and of expected outcomes. Pain is reduced to the tolerable level. Anxiety is reduced and client has self-reported uh, tolerance to stressors. So you have to be able to uh, work with the client, make sure that the pain is tolerable for that person because pain is whatever they say it is, okay? <clears throat> Talking too much. Question two, which of the following interventions will the nurse uh, anticipate implementing for a client with a diagnosis of a myocardial infarction. Okay. Adjusting the bed to a trendella position, maintaining prescription of complete bed rest at, for all at least five days, providing clear fluids throughout hospitalization, administer a stool softener to prevent straining while on having a bowel movement. Got any, got any clues? Yeah. Okay, it's D, administering a stool softener to prevent strain with bowel movements. This reduces the risk of constipation and straining, which may put a strain or damage the myocardium even more, okay? <clears throat> Occlusive disorder uh, continued here. This is peripheral disorders, blood, di blood disorders. So uh, PVD, peripheral vascular disease. <clears throat> Excuse me. A condition that affects prim uh, primarily the blood vessels that supply oxygen to the lower limbs. Uh, examples PAD, uh, peripheral artery disease, or NODS disease, thrombo thrombus, uh, thrombus, or embolism. 
Uh, men are affected more than women by PAD in the lower extremities. Complications, uh, critical limb ischemia characterized by open sores or infection that uh, do not resolve, uh, become gangrenous, threaten the viability of the limb and possible amputation. <clears throat> Renaud's disease um, <clears throat> is a brief uh, spasm of the arteries and the arterioles in the fingers, toes, nose, ears, chin, cause temporary ischemia of the tissue. The <clears throat> vessels dilate widely to compensate for the restriction. Patchy areas of necrosis occur with the prolonged ischemia. Uh, assessment findings, numbness and tingling, awkwardness, uh, fumbling after the initial pallor of the hands, especially the fingers, become deeply cyanotic and begin to ache. Ischemic, ischemia, pain, and paresthesia. Okay. Medical management is the avoid factors that precipitate attacks, smoking cessation, drug therapy, and peripheral vascular disease. Um, surgical management is gangrenous areas are amputated, nursing management, warming hands when water uh, to uh, abort the attack, imagery, uh, McIntyre, McIntyre maneuver, which is swinging the motion, distributes blood uh, into the distal areas of the fingers. So it's basically just swinging your arms wildly and that the force of gravity pushes the blood down into your body there. Um, educate the family, wear gloves during household chores, and especially if it's cold outside. Um, thrombophlebitis, pathophysiology is the inflammation of the veins accompanied by a clot or thrombus formation, uh, levothrombosis, embolus, and DVT. Assessment findings, numbness, tingling, cramping, arterial pulsation, absent below the obstructed areas. Uh, DVT, mild fever and pain, swelling, tenderness, of the affected extremity and positive Holman sign. Uh, diagnostic findings are arteriography or venography, a Doppler ultrasound, um, plethosmography measures volume changes in the venous and arterial system. Okay. <clears throat> Medical management, bed rest, elevation of the extremity, local heart heat, analgesic subcutaneous injections of <clears throat> continuous IV heparin therapy and oral coagulation. Um, surgical management, <clears throat> uh, thrombectomy, um, nursing management, history of symptoms, characteristics of pain, home and sign exam, exams and extremities and it compares the skin color color, temperature, capillary refill time, tissue integrity, um, measures each cap and palpates peripheral pulses. Um, a lot of times with people with this type of disorder, um, they have a difference in the size of their calves. So you have to measure those. Varicose veins, uh, the valves in the veins become inc incompetent, resulting in varicosities, swelling of the veins. Uh, causes prolonged standing, compromise, obesity, uh, compromises, um, obesity and pressure on the blood vessels from enlarged fetus, liver, or abdominal tumors. So um, assessment findings, legs feel heavy and tired, particularly after a prolonged standing activity or elevation of the legs uh, relieves the discomfort. Leg veins look distended and torturous, uh, can be seen under the skin as dark blue or purple snake-like elevations. Diagnostic findings is the Brody-Trendelenburg test. If you put them in Trendelenburg, 
and put their legs up, uh, you can actually see the uh, varicosities shrink in size, okay? Medical management, exercise, walking, swimming, uh, losing weight, wearing elastic support or stockings. So guys, you need to wear them just like the women wear support hose. Guys, you need to buy some um, lower leg uh, anti-embolic hose and wear those when you're up on your legs, uh, when you're lay up on your feet for long periods of time. Uh, surgical management is vein ligation or vein stripping. They go up in, they make two incisions, one at the top, one at the bottom, and they close off the vein on either end and they send a wire through there and they hook it at the far, the distal end and pull it out through the upper end. So it doesn't sound pretty, but it does great things for the person that has these. Assess skin, uh, distal circulation, peripheral edema, client's level of discomfort, ability to do active or is isometric leg exercises, um, ambulation, post-surgery, and anti-embolic stockings. Um, the isometric exercise is just basically uh, when you're even sitting, you can take and squeeze your calf muscles and that adds as a pump to push the blood vessels up, the blood up through the vessels and keep them from uh, getting caught. A client diagnosed with varicose veins is reluctant to have surgery to repair them. She asked the nurse what she can do to reduce the pain of varicosities. The nurse suggests that the client A, engages in 30 minutes of aerobic exercise every day, B, wear knee-high trouser socks, C, avoid sitting or standing for long periods of time, D, ride a stationary bicycle each day, and it is C, avoid sitting or standing for long periods of time. Standing or sitting for long periods of time causes varicose veins to develop and increase pain for the client. In addition, <clears throat> blood stasis predisposes the client to blood clots. Aerobic activity would increase the pain for the client. Okay, aneurysms. Uh, stretching or bulging of an arterial wall causes uh, arteriosclerosis, hypertension, trauma, uh, congenital weakness. Uh, assessment findings, asymptomatic, massive hemorrhage, pain, discomfort, symptoms related to uh, pressure on nearby structures. Uh, diagnostic findings, uh, radiography can uh, determine aneurysms when the arterial wall contains calcium deposits, um, or they can do a, a dye test and shoot the dye up into the artery, and then you can see the formation of the aneurysm, the arteriography is what they call it, okay? Uh, <clears throat> okay, occlusive disorders, continued medical management, administering antihypertensive drugs and keeping blood pressure within normal range. Uh, surgical management, bypass uh, or replacement of the graft, <clears throat> grafting, nursing management, stress and activity to a minimal, um, avoid straining during BMs, coughing or holding breath while changing position, monitor vital signs, INO, and skin assessment, color and temperature. And that is it for today. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to um, end the